Good morning. I hope everyone is doing well today. My name is Mary Ann, and I am so excited to be hosting the Atlantic White Shark Conservancy's online enrichment program today. Um, today we are going to be doing an, a demonstration of a investigation that you can actually do at home. And our theme today is looking at food chains and food webs. And we're going to explain what each of those are um, and how they are actually two different things. So we are really excited to have all of you tuning in with us this morning. Um, for those of you who are new to the Atlantic White Shark Conservancy's online enrichment programs, we are a nonprofit organization that is based on Cape Cod. Uh, and we work in white shark conservation. So through research, public safety and education, we are trying to ensure that we have white sharks for years to come because of their important role in our marine ecosystem. And we're gonna be looking at, you know, one of their roles today uh, through this investigation. So we do have on our website, we have a few different PDF downloads that you can use uh, either as we're going through the lesson today or if you want to print them out later and you can do them as a follow up to this lesson. Um, we absolutely encourage that. If you don't have a printer at home, no worries. Grab some scrap paper, maybe a, you know, recycle a brown shop, a paper shopping bag and you can write on that or use that for the investigation today. We are all about making use of whatever you can find at home, but just please, please don't get us in trouble with your family members and you want to make sure that you ask permission before you take anything to go ahead and try this at home demonstration today. Okay, we don't want to get any messages from family members saying I went to cook dinner tonight and I couldn't because my child stole all the dinner materials to do this at home investigation. Um, so just make sure, you know, again, everyone is asking permission before you take anything to try this lab at home. And really this lesson and what we're doing this week is talking about shark diet um, and, you know, looking at what sharks eat and then that role in our ocean food chain. So when we look at a food chain, okay, and try to just start our understanding of that concept, you know, what you see here is an example of a marine food chain. So you can make all different types of food chains and, you know, they exist in different ways, you know, whether it is you're focused on ocean animals or land animals. Um, and depending on the ecosystem that you're focused in on, you know, what this food chain could look like could vary. Um, but really, you know, just like that, a chain link fence, or you think of a chain on a necklace, we're talking about looking at things that are actually linked together. So all of the living things in our oceans and all living things are connected in some way. They all have that link, like the links on a chain. So you can see that chain there and how they're interconnected. And so this is, you know, a basic food chain looking at a white shark eating seals. Seals eat sand lance, and then that sand lance eats um, they eat some of the copepods, which are a, a animal plankton, and animal plankton is going to eat some plant plankton. So this is, you know, just demonstrating and trying to give everyone at home that visual of what a chain would actually look like. And when we look at the food chain, we're really looking at how different living things are connected from one to the other based on what they eat and then what eats them, if there's anything that eats them. So to better explain this, we're gonna get into, as I said, some of that vocabulary. And we're gonna to start to give each of these living things a name, you know, what, what part of the food chain are they in? So the first thing that we would look at is a producer. Every food chain is going to have a producer and that is an organism that produces or creates its own food. So this would be, you know, some type of plant or algae. And producers, you know, often are making their own food through a process called photosynthesis. So that's the actually using the sun's, the sunlight to actually convert the sun's energy into that food source for them. Okay. And that is converting it so that then they have that energy so that they can carry out their functions. So producers are actually making their own food. And so when we look at a food chain, you absolutely could incorporate the sun into it because, you know, that being, you know, that process of photosynthesis and plants taking the sunlight and converting that energy into their food source, um, you know, that process is really the true basis for any type of food chain that you're going to create, whether you're looking at one in the ocean 
or on land. So we have those producers. You know, as I said, plants or algae, um, and that could be different marine plants like seaweed, sea lettuce. It could also be um, one of the two types of plankton. So we have plant plankton, which we call phytoplankton, and we have animal plankton, which we call zooplankton. And phytoplankton, which is the plant plankton, they do go through that photosynthesis process. And so phytoplankton uh, are producers. Now for living things that do not make their own food, okay, we call those consumers. So this would be looking at an animal that cannot produce its own food and they must eat plants or other animals for their energy. So this is when we can start talking about insects, reptiles, mammals, fish, okay? Then as a consumer, they have to actually, you know, go out and hunt, capture, and then consume, you know, what it is that they're going to obtain so that they can have the energy that they need to carry out their daily functions, okay? So producers are making their own food. Consumers cannot make their own food. They actually have to go out and they have to obtain it, okay? Um, and so they're going to be eating other things. So you have consumers are going to be eating producers and that energy is transferred, okay? So by consuming a producer, then you know whatever that living thing is, they're then obtaining the energy that they need to carry out their daily functions. As we get towards the end of our food chain, and I didn't have this illustrated before, but that's when we also get into what we call decomposers. So decomposers are incredibly important parts of the ecosystem. So looking at the collection of all living things, um, you know, decomposers are organisms that feed on dead plants or animals. So as part of the life cycle, you know, all living things, you know, their life does come to an end. And so when those living things die and we're looking in an ocean environment, a lot of times those dead organisms will actually sink down towards our ocean floor. And this is where worms, bacteria, um, if we're looking at a terrestrial food chain, mushrooms, you know, they are all then going to feed and actually break down whatever that dead organism is. Um, but that's where they're going to get their energy from. So decomposers are incredibly important um, and they do rely on the end of a life cycle when living things die to then can be able to access the food that they need to obtain their energy. So they would be that final part of any type of, you know, food chain that we are making because they are looking at, you know, consuming anything that has actually died. Now, other words that we can use in this food chain, um, one of which would be prey. So prey is an animal that is hunted by another animal for food. Um, so when we are looking at white sharks in our local ecosystem, okay, their prey item that they are, you know, hunting um, is the seals. So looking at the gray seals um, and sometimes even the harbor seals. So, you know, that would be that prey item, that food source. And so as a seal, since they're being hunted by the shark, they are a prey. Um, and then we also have predators. So in that analogy I was just giving, looking at white sharks, you know, the white shark would be the predator. So they're an animal that hunts another animal for their food, that predator role. Um, what's interesting is when we talk about predator and prey, um, is that some animals can actually be both. So, you know, we just talked about the shark and the seal, but if we kept going in our food chain, the seal is also a predator. It's a prey item for the shark, but seals are gonna consume sand lance, a type of fish. And so because they are the one that is hunting that sand lance, then they are in fact a predator. So it is true that some living things can be both prey and predator. And then there are other living things that are just prey because of where they are on the you know, food chain and looking there. And there are some that are just predators. Um, so that hopefully will give you some background information as we are talking about a food chain and the different levels and the different parts. So if we look at this illustration again, um, talking about our food chain. So let's see here. If we are in fact looking at the very base of it, okay, as we talked about, this would we be where we find those producers. 
So, you know, this picture is illustrating phytoplankton, okay? So they are that plant plankton that is going to make their own food. They have to produce their food. So also in this circle, we have some animal plankton, that zooplankton, that is going to consume the phytoplankton. If we go on to this next level here, this shows some sand lance, okay? Um, or a school of, you know, other small fish. And so looking here, they are going to consume the zooplankton. So we're going up that link on the food chain here. And so they are going to then be consuming, um, you know, the animal plankton. And that energy is transferred from the animal plankton to the small fish that we have here. And then if we go up to the next level, this is where we have our next consumer, okay? So this would be the seal. Um, and as I said before, the other word we could use to describe this consumer when we're looking at the seal could be a predator because they are preying on or consuming those smaller fish that you see here. And then if we keep going up to the next link on our chain, that is where we have that white shark. And so the white shark is a consumer because it is not making its own food. So you notice in our example here, we have multiple consumers. We only had the one producer at the base down here, okay, which was our plants, that phytoplankton, but then we had multiple consumers as we went throughout. Um, and when we look at the white shark, you know, we can call them a producer, I'm sorry, a consumer, um, but they're also a predator because they are going after their prey, the seal. Um, and because they're at the very top of our food chain, they have a special title, they are an apex predator. And so an apex predator being the, you know, living thing at the very top of an ocean food chain or food web. Um, and so they have that top role. Um, and that's a really important role because when we look at the food chain, we need to make sure that, you know, to be an effective chain, everything has to stay intact. And you want to make sure that all the living things in this food chain are balanced in their population levels. And so apex predators being at the top, like the white shark, they're gonna help to you know, make sure that they stay balanced. Without that apex predator in an ecosystem, you would see the next, you know, if we took off that link, the next link that we would see those seals, their population would continue to grow and grow and grow. And then that next level, we have all of these seals. And then what we're going to see here is that all the seals are eating all of the fish. And we're going to see some of those um, fish, you know, maybe not exist anymore because the seals have eaten them all and they haven't had a chance to actually reproduce. Um, so this, you know, hopefully as we now understand some of those terms, looking at what a producer is, a consumer, talking about a predator and prey, um, the next piece that I could absolutely add, you know, coming, you know, off of this would be that decomposer. So remembering that when something dies, um, you know, as that body sinks down to our ocean floor and we look at it in a marine, then it is still a food source. Energy is still being transferred um, to those decomposers. So that different types of bacteria, some of the worms that live down on our ocean floor, you know, they're going to feed on that dead decaying, you know, organic material here. Um, and so a question just did come in looking at an orca whale um, and what their role would be and where they would be in this ocean, you know, food chain. Um, and depending on, you know, which specific ecosystem you are looking in, you know, it is true that orca whales have learned how to hunt and consume great whites. So orcas, you know, they are an apex predator as well. And so in some marine environments and looking at that food chain in that ecosystem, you could see, you know, having two apex predators with both that orca whale and that white shark. Um, but then this is where, and we're going to get into this a little bit further, um, we can grow out what we would call a food web because you're going to have those two apex predators working to help maintain the balance of things. So they end up being essentially more side by side. Um, but it does depend on, you know, the ecosystem you're looking at because, you know, making sure that you do have both of those, you know, animals living in that ecosystem. But I want you to hold on to that thought because we're going to come back to that when we take our chain and make it a web in a little bit. Um, but right now what I want to do is I want to, you know, go over with all of you how you can make your own food chain at home.
So this is our at-home investigation for all of you to work on today or tomorrow, um, whenever it works for you. But we want you all to make your own food chain. That would be your first step, okay? And here in the Cape, it's actually a sunny morning right now. So maybe you could use chalk and you can go outside to make your diagram of a food chain. Um, you could use Legos and have different color, colored Legos represent different living things in the ecosystem. Um, you can use pen and paper, um, or some of you I know have some really great stuffy collections. Mia, if you're watching today, I am totally thinking about you. Um, but use some of your stuffies or, you know, these plastic type animals. Um, we have a lot of these that we use for our education programs, but you could pull out some of these and you could try to make an actual model of a food chain with this. Um, for me today, I'm actually going to make my model by playing with food. Um, and this is definitely, if you're gonna use this to you know, make your own model at home, please, please, please ask the adults that you, know, you live with and who are caring for you before you raid the pantry. Okay, um, but if we look here, what I'm using to make my model today is actually some marshmallows and some linguine pasta, okay? So this is how I'm gonna make a food chain model um, this morning. So as we talked about, you know, looking at the base of any food chain, you know, it all really starts with the sun and the sun's energy. So what I did is I took one of those marshmallows and I used some markers and I actually drew a sun right onto there to be that starting point, okay? The sun as an energy source, okay, is then going to you know, emit its energy. Now I'm gonna use my piece of pasta to create my own chain. I'm gonna stick it right into that marshmallow there, all right? And so what did we say is going to make its own food? What do we call the living things that actually create their own food using the sun's energy? That would be a producer. So different types of plants, whether it is plant plankton, uh, that phytoplankton, or some of the marine plants like seaweeds and sea lettuces. Um, you know, so you can, what I did next is I took my marshmallow and I drew a plant leaf on there. Um, and if you're not super artistic, which I am not, um, you can write out, you know, the living things that you're making for your food chain. So now you can see I have that first connection where I'm making that link between the sun and a plant, okay? Since the plant is gonna go through that process of photosynthesis and convert the sun's energy into food, that food that it will use, you know, to have that energy. And then if we're looking at, say, some of that phytoplankton, that plant plankton, they can be eaten by different types of animal plankton, like copepods. I just broke one of my pieces of pasta. So the next link might be a little small from one marshmallow to the next, okay? So I looked at a type of zooplankton, which, is, which are copepods, all right? They are going to eat some of that phytoplankton. Um, and this is where that investigation can really take you even further. You know, for some of my examples today, I'm using very basic and general terms um, in terms of plant. I'm not getting too specific, but this is where you can look at different resources and you can get specific, all right? That's what we want you to investigate is you can choose any living thing, whether it's in the ocean or it is found on land and then learn about what it eats and then investigate. You know, if we're looking at a lion, if we're looking at a bear, you know, they eat what? You gotta research, you wanna find out, once you find out what their prey item is, okay, then you wanna take that prey item and you wanna to go to the next level. What does that prey eat? Or maybe could that prey be a producer, okay? Do they make their own food? And so you can then make your own food chain, all right, by going through this investigation. So we have, all right, we have our producer, and then we also have our consumer here, and we are gonna keep going. Just gonna get a little tricky because it might get a little heavy off the top here, but all right, copepods are eaten by a small fish called some sand lances. So I did a next marshmallow. I'm gonna have to lie it down here for a minute so it doesn't all fall. 
um, would be the sand lance there. All right, so see my chain is growing. I'm gonna have to scroll it up here through the screen so everyone can see. And then sand lance here off the coast of Cape Cod, one of the living things that eats all those sand lance are actually the seals. So I made my own attempt at a seal illustration on this marshmallow here. I also labeled it in case I got that confused with my sand lance picture because it's a little hard drawing on a marshmallow. And I'm going to add that to our food chain, okay? And so you can see how we are growing, all right? But we have, you know, starting with the sun and then looking at our producer, we have a few consumers through here. And then what eats seals? If we're looking specifically at the Cape Cod ecosystem here, this is also going to be our apex predator in this region. And that would be the shark, the white shark, okay? So I was inspired by Jaws for this illustration. Uh, and I added that on there. All right, so here we go. Now we have this full food chain starting with our sun. We have a producer that phytoplankton that is going to convert the sun's energy, okay? And then producers are eaten by consumers, things that cannot make their own food. So I had a type of animal plankton, a copepod, which is then eaten by some small fish, those sand lances. And then they are eaten by, you know, those larger consumers, the seals, which are eaten by those white sharks. Now I forgot one marshmallow, all right? Looking, if we're gonna go full circle here, when that white shark dies, what is going to consume that white shark? What do we call that last part? A decomposer, okay? So I'm gonna use the example of some bacteria, okay? That could go ahead and eat that. So for my bacteria, I am actually gonna write the word bacteria because I don't know how I would draw bacteria on my marshmallow here. And I'm going to add that, all right, looking at that final piece of my chain, okay? So this is what, you know, we want to see all of you try to create at home today. We want you to actually investigate, you know, a living thing that you have interest in and really look at, you know, is it a producer? Is it a consumer? Um, and then, you know, thinking about those other terms. Is it a predator? Is it a prey item? Is it, you know, both predator and prey? And how is it connected to other living things in the ecosystem where it is found? And so you can, if you have some marshmallows at home and maybe some pasta, you can make your own model of a food chain like this. Uh, if you don't, you know, as I said, use some chalk, try to find some recycled materials. Um, if you have different toys at home, whether they're Legos, whether it's looking at, you know, some maybe marine or land toys that you have around the house. See how you can incorporate them to make your own food chain. You can also go mixed media, all right? You could take some toys, you could take some Legos. If there was other types of food you have at home, maybe you could use that. Um, but, you know, we just want to see and hear how you can make your own model of a food chain, okay? And so I'm going to share my screen again here because, you know, we've been focused on the food chain. So that's just looking at one line, one piece here, okay? But a food chain can be expanded. And what I say by that is that would be when we're starting to look at how, you know, we know that some of these animals eat more than just one type of thing. So that's when we could start to have, you know, branches come off here a little bit. So for this, I'm gonna use that example, as you can see in this picture, because you don't just see, you know, our shark going just to the seal. You see the white shark here going for squid, for the seal, for, you know, other shark species and some different types of fish, okay? So if I go back to my model here, you know, we could take this and expand our food chain into a food web. And this I definitely can't hold without it all falling apart. Um, but as we can see just from this, you know, you can expand out because, you know, when we look at our ecosystem, it's not composed of singular chains, you know, like we just made. It really is one giant food web because all the living things are connected in some way. 
And that's what this illustration is starting to show. But this is even still a very small scale when we really look at, all right, a food web and how everything is interconnected, this is more what we would actually see, okay? So across the top here, you can see, you know, if we look at um, our axis over here to the side, the top would represent different top predators, those apex predators. And that question came in, you know, looking at, you know, can you have more than one apex predator in an ecosystem? And you can see that here. And we do see that in some places um, where, you know, some of those apex predators end up can go at each other um, and try to consume one another, like we see with white sharks or orca whales. Um, but primarily they're eating things that are lower in the food chain for them as more of their natural diet. Um, and then you look at some of those meso predators. So this would be the seals in our ecosystem. And then you go down, but you see these lines are going all over the place. And so if you were to remove one of those living things, you know, then how everything's connected, it's gonna affect more than just one thing. And that's something really important for all of you to think about and realize at home that, you know, a food chain is a great way to start your investigation and really understanding how one living thing is connected to maybe at least two other living things. But once you've realized and you've been able to see that, like we did here, okay, then what we encourage you to do is go further with it, okay? So an example of this would be, you know, looking at that white shark. So we know that our white shark in the example we already used, right? One thing, one prey item that they consume could be those seals. But we have also seen in this area, okay, that I can, that some of the white sharks are actually going after some of the stripers, which is a type of fish that we have in this Cape Cod region. So I'm going to quickly do my best to draw a striper. I didn't go for the right color here, but I've got a little fish, okay? And going to put that, connect this. So now I can see that my shark could go after that seal, or I can add this other piece in, could go after that striper, okay? So now we don't see it's not just linear. We're not just looking at one, we're looking at, you know, multiple food sources that are, you know, consumed by the shark. Another thing that, you know, white sharks are going to feed on, and this actually, you know, we can look at a white shark in the terms of being a decomposer, is we see in this area that when a whale dies, the white sharks will feed on that. You know, we've seen it a few times. Unfortunately, there have been some dead humpbacks and the white sharks are feeding on that dead animal. So for here, I'm just gonna do the fluke of a whale to be something different in my illustration. I'm also gonna label it, all right? We're going to build this off of here as well. I guess I gotta put it this way. Oh, and I broke my piece of pasta again. It happens. Okay. So now we're going to build this out and you can see how we're making it more into a web. Um, and so from here, I could keep going and now, you know, we could build this and I'm also starting this backwards this time from the shark I'm going down. Um, so then I could look at, you know, what whales eat. I could look further at what seals eat and continue to build and build. And you're gonna see how then some of these living things, you know, are connected in, they're connected to so many different things. Um, a fun way, if you're doing this investigation at home, maybe with a sibling or with an adult who's at home, is that, you know, you both decide to investigate ocean food chains. And so you could look at, you know, building a food chain for the white shark to show, you know, how the white shark starts there at the top as apex predator and go all the way down to that producer level. And maybe a sibling or a parent could look at, you know, maybe they start their ocean food chain with a humpback whale or with a gray seal. And they're gonna start from, you know, where that animal is and go all the way down to the producer level. And then you can take your two chains that you've made and see, you know, using some other pasta pieces, how they could connect and where those two, two different food chains actually interlock and you can start to build out that food web. 
you know, when we've worked with some school groups or with our summer court program groups, this is what we have, you know, the students do is they each make their own food chain and then we connect them all to make that food web. And we start to see pasta lines going all over the place. And that's what we want all of you to see, how all of the living things in our ocean are truly connected and how, you know, because they're all connected, that really shows and hopefully builds that understanding of how we need every living thing in our ocean. We need them all at healthy levels because that is what, you know, one living thing is going to affect another living thing. So if we lose one, it's going to have that effect on everything. Okay. So hopefully all of you at home are now excited to go ahead and investigate a living thing today and then build that food chain and then work to dig even deeper and make that food chain into a full food web. You know, just a reminder to everyone that if you visit our website, we have different PDF resources that you can download and print, or you can read them off your computer, tablet, you know, whatever device you're viewing this on. Um, and then you can write it down in notebook paper, but to better understand this concept of a food chain and a food web, there's a vocabulary lesson. So you can review some of those terms of producer, consumer, decomposer, as well as predator and prey. Um, so we really try to provide a lot of resources for you to just take this lesson and continue it throughout your morning. Thank you so much for joining. We hope everyone has a great day um, and we'll see you again soon. Thank you, everyone.